Um, so I'm Marcus Huddle. I'm professor for artificial intelligence at the Australian National University. Um, my career path was maybe not quite traditional. I started computer science and physics, sort of alternating back and forth. A PhD in computer science, then bachelor in physics, then masters in computer science, then PhD in physics, then sort of a second PhD is called habilitation in computer science, with a four and a half years gap working in the industry. Um, so, but finally, I settled on um, the AI problem, what I was always interested in, and um, since sort of 17 years, I work on this theory, which I call universal artificial intelligence, um, which I have developed uh, quite a bit in the last uh, 17 years. Um, so lots has happened in the last five years in AI. So AI um, was in fashion a couple of times and fell out of fashion. So you know, I'm not sure whether five years ago, but it's a pretty good time frame. You know, AI became um, quite popular again and you could, you know, publicly talk about that you work on AI in particular on the grant uh, scheme of uh, working on general intelligence. So uh, eight years ago, the Artificial General Intelligence Conference Series has been founded. Um, then there have been you know, a couple of successes. Uh, we had um, IBM Watson um, um, beating the best human player in Jeopardy. Then we had uh, Google DeepMind. Um, first, they came up with um, DQNs playing uh, a number of Atari games you know, on a human level. <coughs> If you're a little bit generous. Um, <laughs> um, and then um, AlphaGo last year beat the world champion um, in Go, which was a big success. Uh, we have self driving cars. Um, that's not a particular date, but you know, you know, maybe 10 years, you know, they started and five years ago, and then now they're legalized in some states, and ultimately they will come you know, on our streets in masses. So there have been a lot of success of AI. Uh, in the past five years, and um, lots of additional funding, especially um, deep neural networks is um, very fashionable now, billions of dollars here, billions of dollars there. So first the European Union announced their biggest project ever, um, a publicly funded project um, with a billion euro for um, a whole brain evaluation uh, within 10 years. Um, then the Americans quickly after um, announced a similar program then we had OpenAI, um, funded by Elon Musk and others with, I think, overall a billion dollars um, two years ago or so, which aims at you know, building AGIs, um, but all will be open source. Um, so as a, a contrast to Google, which got more and more closed. Um, DeepMind itself, which was co-founded five years ago by my first PhD student um, with two others. Um, so they're working on AGI. Um, so all this happened in the last five years. So it looks great, mm. promising. Yeah. So the big dream of creating um, general intelligence systems is, is a really old one. You know, it started in the in the 50s um, already, and then it turned out to be harder than expected. Um, so funding declined, and. Um, but the public was probably, you know, not too much aware of that or concerned or excited about it. But now, since we have more and more projects which are based on AI technology, you know, like self-driving cars, um, uh, personal assistants like Siri, um, Google search, although I think probably most people wouldn't sort of recognize that there's a lot of, you know, intelligence going on behind it. But um, like, you know, um, AlphaGo beating the world champion in Go. And all these successes um, have made the public more aware of that AI is coming. Um, the, the movies are this, I mean, there are more and more movies about, you know, super intelligences. Um, the question is what came first, or so the public interest and then the movies or the movies which created public interest? Um, not so clear to me. Yeah, so regarding science fiction movies, I have seen a couple of them, not all of them. Often I forgot the story. Um, there's some good ones out there, some not so good ones. Um, you know, many science fiction have some good aspects and then sort of some Terminator-like aspect, um, which um, is somewhat annoying. Um, I think the most realistic science fiction about the future of AI taking over is still a very old one from the 1970s 
called Colossus. Uh, people are not so much aware of it, but I highly recommend that, that you watch this movie. It's sort of a supercomputer originally designed for taking control over um, defense, um, American defense, and then the Russians develop a similar computer, and then they start to communicate, and finally figure out they should control all of humanity because it's in their best interest, but in a benign way, in a dic dictatorial but benign way. Um, uh, people don't like dictatory, but you know, if you have a benign dictatorial, if that is a stable system, that's the big problem, then it's maybe not too bad to give control to the machines. I mean, most people view this end who have seen this movie as you know, a bad end. Um, let me pick another movie, let's say Transcendence, right? You know, Transcendence started really great, you know, and then the main actor, Johnny Depp, you know, um, went into the machine and cured you know, all the um, ill people. So it sounded like utopia. And I mean, this was a movie where I had the feeling, you know, 10 minutes before the end, the directors felt, wow, this is too good to be true. How can we make this end badly? And they had to really think very, very hard. Oh man, how can we turn this movie around? And then somehow they managed yeah, to make this ending bad. Um, so cut the last 10 minutes of Transcendence or whatever, 15 minutes, and it was a great movie. Another movie is Ex Machina. Um, I have mixed feelings about it, so I mean some aspects were nice, um, like you know, you know the machine, you know, it, it, how human-like is it, but they messed up completely the Turing test, you know, from the very beginning it was obvious, you know, that it's a machine and not a human, at least, you know, um, technically, but um, yeah, it had some good elements and um, the basic idea of sort of machine um, trying to get free, you know, is, um, you know, quite valid and, you know, um, of concern, right? So if you develop machines which um, should serve us but become super intelligent, um, that's hard to, to do.